Entirely Geek, episode 18. We're down here in Huntington Beach, California with our special guest, Brian Bedell. He is kind of special. We'll see how special he is on the show. We have some really good topics today, but first, we'll tease Dan's tip. Thanks, Eric. Thanks for teasing my tip. Uh, that's how I like it. <laughs> so today, I'm going to go over a uh, program that I use called a Cronus uh, Home Image. And basically, what this is for is for, it's for my PC. Anytime I put a new installation of Windows on it in all my programs, I do a, a fresh image copy. And what that allows me to do is, you know, a year, two years down the line when the computer is running slow and having problems, instead of going through and reinstalling Windows and putting my programs on there, I'll just simply boot up in a Cronus, pop my disk back in the image I made earlier, and my computer's like back to brand new without having to go through and reinstall everything. It takes about 15 minutes as opposed to a couple hours for reinstalling software and everything. I just recently did it last weekend. It was awesome. I mean, my computer's back up and running in 15 minutes, no hassle whatsoever. Well, so you know what I like to do, Dan? I always like to throw out um, you do, you do, things like to, for yeah. you. So when's the um, review going to come? A video review I could showing do, me how I could to do, do it. I, you know, I'll do a short video screencast right. of how the software looks and what to do as far as that. It's pretty straightforward, but it's definitely worth picking it up. They have the home version. It's pretty cheap, and uh, it saves you so much time. Do you use that for your PC or your Mac? A PC currently. I don't know if it works for Mac, honestly, but I use it for my PC. Okay. No, like you have to use it for your Mac. Not as much, yeah. <laughs> That's this probably guy, why. This guy right here. <laughs> so to let you guys know, former PC turned to Mac, been a Mac head forever. And then another Mac head. So he's surrounded by Mac, as you can see. So it's kind I, of interesting. This is my computer right here. I'm it is Mac, your computer. Okay? So I'm Mac. It is. But I, I'm both. But you know, he's, I'm he's diversified. I'll, I'll have to go. I'm fair. He's I'd, diversified. But I like yeah. the Mac. I do like the Mac. Yeah. And I do have a rumor another video is coming, but um, of, of you changing your phone, right? Something? Well, yeah. I was mentioned I, I switched from the iPhone to the Samsung. Temporarily, I think. <laughs> so soon to go back iphone yeah. will soon be in your future again <laughs> possibly yes so we have a really cool article coming up it is from the verge.com the nice interesting part about this one is that it is talking about piracy and anti-piracy where video games are putting in basically um tricks and posting those up onto the website i think this is pretty cool for me because i don't download games illegally Mm -hmm. But if I did, I think it would give it an edge because some of the things is like, instead of 10 people being your enemy, you have like 500 all at once. Mm. But the nice part is, is that for someone who does do that, they can never win. They can't save their games. It makes it a little more interesting for them to not be able to have that edge where if you're buying the game, you can actually save at the end. You can have all those extra lives, right. things like that. So they're like crippling your game that you get. They're putting yeah. a bait version out there that you grab and then they're basically tricking you to get it. Yeah. Definitely. So it's pretty much, it's really hard to like locate the real game. So if they put out this crippled game, you're, you're spending yeah. hours and hours trying to download like a 10 gigabyte and game. And they're probably gonna make it named well, like they're gonna make it really easy to get so that you wanna download that version. Right. It goes crazy everywhere. Yeah. And it's not so different that you notice it right away, but as you start playing, and especially if you played the real game, you wouldn't even know for right. a while anyway, I would think, it's depending on how they cripple it, if it's actually the real game or if, not. If I spent a whole day trying to like look, look for a game that actually worked, I'd probably just go and finally just pay for it that's, so i think that's kind of the point they want you you know what i mean it make, if they make it easier to get it legally uh, than downloading it illegally then it's probably that's the whole point of it is just to make it easy yeah. smart see, good no it's smart on their end you know it's just yeah that's all i was gonna say when you when you think about it though if i am a game person we go back and forth with this with napster with with um the different companies that have where you can download um video games um, movies, you name it. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, if I'm in, if I'm the industry, I actually don't care. And maybe that's because I'm a small person, whatever. But I, it's getting my games, it's getting my shows, it's getting all my stuff out there mm -hmm. where more people are using it. Yeah, right. I'm not making money from them specific, right. but I have all of that um, revenue from other people seeing it coming in. No, I think okay. There's a conversation we had earlier about Game of Thrones in one of our episodes, yes. and how like. HBO doesn't care. I mean, they have to kind of care because it's the industry standard, but in a way, they're basically saying, like, well, it must be more popular. I mean, because there's certain countries like Australia, other countries that can't get Game of Thrones in, in the right. same time frame we do. So they're downloading illegally to see it. So, like, they're almost, in that kind of situation, they're like, well, we must be popular. And yep, they're kind of taking right. the right stone on it. Now, you know, software, that sort of thing. I, I tend to believe that people that pirate software and movies, they were never going to buy them anyway frankly. Yep, right. Unless it got to a certain point where it's cheap enough where it just made more sense, like you said. It's mm -hmm. like, you know what? It's so easy to get the game. It's so cheap. I'll just go ahead and get it legitimate. It's so much less hassle. 
but most like people kind of what pirates, Adobe did. People go out of their way to pirate things. So those people are probably never going to pay. But, what, but what's the percentage of like pirates? I don't know. I think you know, video game industry is doing pretty good. So is the movie industry. I don't think it's I really. Think hurt well, I mean, you look at Game of Thrones. It's a number. One, it's a number one pirated show right. worldwide. Right. And mm-hmm. we talked about it a couple episodes ago, where in all reality, it the U.S. has always been like fourth or fifth on mm-hmm. the piracy for it. We were number one the last season. Right, right. The beginning of this season. So. Well, even so, I, I know that games are kind of typically, especially on a mobile platform, that they're kind of typically going towards the, the free version anyway. So you just get it anyway, and then mm-hmm. they have the in-app purchases, and then it, people end up buying um, you know, something cheap that right. that's, uh, Don't. costs a lot of money. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I'm like, I'm watching <laughs> I'm you hit like, the microphone. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that, <laughs> that's you, where you, our mic's at. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's my point right now. Yeah, yes. <laughs> So as I'm you're listening to, to this, we are, you know, live. <laughs> yes, this is live. Uh, no, well, no do-overs mostly. Mostly. <laughs> I've had a lot of intros, but yes, that's okay. Yeah. It's okay. That's so normal. our next episode, not episode, our next topic <laughs> comes from TechCrunch.com. And we are talking about another thing being pirated. This one's in- interesting. Brian pointed out earlier that I say this is interesting a lot, but a lot of things. Take a are. shot at home if you're at home. Yeah, yeah it's a new sh- it's a new drinking. I, game. I'm a fan of the show, so I listen to it, and uh, I usually end up getting pretty drunk after uh, an episode because of <laughs> this how, in- how how interesting, interesting it is. Yes. <laughs> so with this. We have Brian. You need to um, shut your phone off. Um, so with, professional. <laughs> listen, I gotta be available at all times. Okay. So, your jack thread is important. Very important, right? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> they should so, be a supporter. They should. That's a miss, yes. So we have a, another piracy issue where it's not done yet, but it's probably soon to be coming. And it's talking about 3D printing. How eventually you have all these you know manufacturers who are printing toys and or who, who manufacture toys and and iPhone cases you name it will now be able to have me buy a three hundred three thousand dollar printer and be able to print the same exact thing as a knockoff mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so they're talking about how there's gonna be websites just like Napster or torrent you know all these things where you can download a template instead of me scanning in something right and me be able to do it one last hot issue on it is they can print guns this way too. Yeah. You were just talking about that, so I won't cut into that, but Brian, how cool would it be to be able to print chocolate, a chocolate bar <laughs> anytime you want? Wow, you're really taking Well, that would be pretty amazing because uh, I am a chocolate fiend, so, you know. I mean, you can become a chocolatier with $3,000. Well, oh, I, I would think that would be definitely worth it, you know? Like, <laughs> Well, well, keep in mind, too, the technology right now is mostly just plastics and metal. It's not really... No, they have chocolate. They no make, joke. They make they chocolate, make chocolate They have it where okay. you can do well, chocolate one day and then I, clean it and if make... If I can um, be in my own Wonka factory, you know, uh, that would be... Uh, no, they don't. They they have like you're they, saying, I'm dead serious. Wait, you have to buy the chocolate and then it etches it. What? No, like, so what you do is your you, face you, into the chocolate. Yeah. So what you, do is you, buy, you buy this. You buy the chocolate mix that they like. They have. You're still buying the mix. Thing. You're, you're still buying the oh, mix. Oh, okay. And you're putting it in, and then what they do is you you're like they make molds within there, and you're okay, like so they, you can make a mold it. with chocolate. No, but they do it in the machine. Everything's done in the machine. Right. right. That's, okay. But you're, think, you're not creating I mean, chocolate. how cool would this look? I mean, we're, I'm just like this, and it's a candy bar. Listen, I'm here for the eye candy, all right? All right, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was probably here for. <laughs> so, but back to, you know, the whole piracy issue. No one thought this in the music industry, that Napster would turn over a whole new leaf to be able to say, hey, you know, we're going to give all this away for free. Right, right. But then there it was all for free. Now we have a new industry. In all reality. Yeah, I mean, you were saying earlier, toys, stuff like that. I mean, I could have the, you know, Batman figure. I could have the one that my friend scanned. And now, oh, yeah, knockoff from the website. I just download it. I have some, you know, a machine. I can make my own figurines. I mean. But how much are you really saving, though? Well, I I think right now it's $3,000 for a machine, which is still pretty cheap, but it's not cheap enough. Right. But eventually... These will be the printers. Five hundred bucks. If it's five hundred bucks, you could print all but kinds if, of stuff. But if, but if you're buying the material, how much would the material? Materials cost? is raw material, though, and, and I'm sure that it will come just like anything else comes down over time. Eventually, uh-huh. I, I think the real benefit of this is eventually you need a part for your something breaks. You, you need know? a part for your car. You need a part for your car. You print it out. Right. Or you need a part for your refrigerator. You print it out. Right. You just download the schematics from the internet, and I bet you at, in time, my old things. I think eventually they're going to try to build DRM into it where. You get certain designs that have like coding. You can't just print them unless you have authorization to print them. And what will happen instead of the company for your refrigerator sending you a part, 
they'll send you the, the, the file. The authorization. Right. Print, print authorization, print exactly. It, so. You're yeah. going to print it. But then people hack that and you'll be able to print it for free. Right. It'll be it'll be interesting yeah. to see what happens. Yeah. It's kinda, it's the costs like, will come down, though. Right. It, it's kind of like just the progression of like what we saw with Napster and then, exactly you know, the burning discs and like... Burning your own CDs instead CDs of having to press and everything. Yeah. I mean, but we've talked, games, about this, we've talked about this before. If you think about it, we, people have been piracy, pirating music forever. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. so it might not have been MP3. It might have been a disc. We had Before a, a tape, disc, a tape. it was a yeah. tape. Right. You know, so we've been doing it forever. It's yeah. just they finally got a way well, to catch it. Or just progressing. But now, but see, the thing about digital, though, like I hand you a tape, and I guess you can copy a tape. So that's not a really good example. And this, you can copy a disc as well. But at digital, you can duplicate it infinite number of times. Yes. Yes. There's no limit. And now it's coming into the physical world. We can duplicate that physical object. Right. Unlimited and, times. And, and that's exactly what yeah. this article is talking about is the fact that it, it, it's someone, you have to think about it this way. This is your mom's job that she does for a living or your dad's job that he does for a living that he will no longer be able to do because now I do it in my house. And yeah. that's what we're cutting out. Music, that's some that's some person making millions of dollars far away. Sometimes. But this is my yeah. this is my parents' yeah. business. It, but in a way, it opened up a whole new business where if I'm a designer, I can design my own prototypes I agree. in my house. So it's like, it's like this double-edged sword is like everything else. Everything like it'll else. cut jobs here, but it'll also make opportunities for entrepreneurs and other people on the other right. end. It's like, it's it's interesting. You'll see where it's interesting. We'll see yeah. where it goes for sure. That is for sure. Any last comments, Brian? Very that interesting. That, that is very interesting. <laughs> Take another shot. <laughs> All right. So moving right along, New York Times. Now this one is very nice article, and the reason why is because if you listen to previous podcasts, and I believe this one might even be pre entirely geek, so you would have to search under um, my two cents, and we were talking about cable TV going to the internet. And we talked about a couple different companies, how they basically bought a warehouse, put these um, antennas, and put these cable companies in this, in this warehouse, and then basically received all this data and then sent it out via the internet, got caught, got shut down, and then we're being sued by these different companies. Mm -hmm. Now, we have Nimble TV, which has now relaunched itself, and I've been watching them kind of grow, and now they're advertising where they now are releasing it to the public again mm. it is the cheapest one is like 29 something and the most expensive one is 79 something i will most likely be doing a review on it um because i find this very interesting it worked flawlessly we watched some of the tv um shows on the way here cnn in the car that's amazing no it's, it's very cool i mean i was surprised by the selection you had you had fx you had usa I mean, some of the stuff they have, yeah, in the app you can get the for free. On, yeah, like yeah. CNN you can get free on your phone already. Yeah. They have their app. But, like, some of the ones, like FX, all those, I've never seen that on a phone unless you're right. using Slingbox. So, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, we kind of talked about it earlier, but it's so much different than Netflix and Hulu. Cause, right, you know, right. Because that's, not, that's not like on a on a movie based level and you can get shows on Hulu yeah plus. older shows however it, Hulu plus, but yeah. it's not like cable where you know you're actually getting the, the no, cable type atmosphere you know what I mean yeah one thing you mentioned too Eric that you were talking about like they have a, a cloud DVR service right where Definitely. you can record I believe 20 it's like 20 hours, hours of like footage so I can record something on my maybe my PC hooked to my TV and then right. go out somewhere and watch it on my phone later on yeah that's the kind of thing that the internet gives advantage to I think the thing that I really liked is if you're a sports fan which some of us geeks are you have um, ESPN, ESPN HD, ESPN 2, 3, you have M MLB, all of this for the in the 49 package, and then you get more on top of that for the $79 mm, package. Okay. And again, we don't sell things here on this show, but it, it was just so amazing well, we for should. us. We should sell, I mean, you want, no, just um, It's really important to us because as a geek, I can now watch shows anywhere I go and you could kind of with the sling box before you can but now that's your connection over the internet though and but know. now this is live TV basically right. on my phone it's not me recording something or me having to have a box that's watching it right there I can right. change the channel wherever I want and not have to worry about doing it at home yeah so the question is would you guys be willing to get rid of your cable at home to go straight to this because you can hook uh, your phone up to the TV your I or your iPad um, yeah I mean I, if I, you're paying $79 a month you know, you won't even have to have uh, your cable anymore unless if it doesn't give you all the channels that you're looking for. I think for me, like, I w it would be interesting to see. I need some kind of dedicated box, maybe a computer or whatever. Uh -huh. I wouldn't want to stream from my phone. My phone's dead or whatever. I got, right. You know what I mean? I would want to have a separate box. But the fact that I have a separate box there, I only pay a flat fee and I get the TV everywhere else, 
and then maybe from the bedroom, I just beam that to the TV or whatever. That'd be interesting to me. Right. I mean, so do you think that this can ultimately put uh, different cable companies out of business, like Dish and so? Uh, so no, TV? and the reason, the reason why, why I say yeah, no content. is because the the way that the content is getting to Nimble TV, if they haven't changed it, is the um, fact that they're actually streaming from the cable companies, and what they're basically doing is making it where the different cable companies are feeding into them, allowing them to have a, a cheaper cost for everybody. Oh, okay. If they go direct, there's a possibility to get cheaper, I guess. Then if, they, if they're allowed to do that, but right. as it stands right now, there's too much money to be made from the content producers to the cable right. companies. There's too much Definitely. money going back and forth, so they're not going to be it. Because I know if you sign up with a new cable service, you know you're looking at twenty dollars a month, and then after the year, you're probably going up to fifty, maybe sixty dollars a month, depending right. on what you get. You know, right, you can right. go up to one hundred and fifty dollars. I pay one hundred thirteen a month. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, but uh, you're starting off with eighty at this, and you're probably very limited to. Uh, but you're getting some good channels, though. But it seemed like it. Yeah, when I saw. Yeah. yeah, you're getting good channels. But I mean, you uh, have MTV. I mean. ESPN, yeah. CNN, which you said is free online anyway. But, already, but, but the only the only yeah. advantage with this is obviously you're, it's mobile. You know, for right. somebody like myself at work, you know, I can sit there and watch TV and you know and uh, be happy. And then when I go home, it's the same exact thing. I, you know, just beam it to the TV like you were saying. The DVR to me is the most interesting thing. I record a show and I can watch it. You, you at work, you can watch a show that you recorded at your house. Right now, that's the thing. Really cool. I haven't yeah. played with it enough, but it shows a thing where it actually shows um, earlier today. So I didn't record anything earlier mm. today. But I don't know if that's just for the guide or if I can actually click and watch something from earlier today. Interesting. Mm. So some mm. very interesting stuff. Take yes. another shot. Um, <laughs> so our next article comes from All Things D. This one I want to talk about last week when we were kind of talking about some other um, music and some other um, innovative stuff. This is Lady Gaga moving from the industry um, of CDs and MP3 to having an app. So each time she releases her new album, it'll be on an app. Now yeah. this is cool because if you guys think about it, I don't ever put a CD, hardly ever, in my in my stuff. So I don't ever really listen to MP3s either. Right. The things I mostly do is listen to apps, play on my iPhone, all that kind of stuff. So the, the part that I like about it is the fact that now I can log on to my iPhone mm -hmm. and be able to just automatically listen to her um, her new CD. Yeah, now, I right. don't know if there'll be one app for all of her CDs the rest or if there'll be a new app each time, mm -hmm. but I thought that was kind of cool how they kind of are going that way. Well, now, it, yeah. Well, ahead, well what, what the app concept, uh, you know, I think the only way that it could actually be uh, revolutionary or evolutionary, whatever you want to call it, is that if they made it like interactive. Mm -hmm. But even that, like why download the app when I can just download it straight from iTunes? Because because I'm sure that the app is gonna be the exact same amount of money that you buy from iTunes. And with my iTunes account, I can I can re-download it at any time I want. If it gets deleted from my phone, I can download it to my computer, I can burn it to a disc. But what's the advantage gonna be to actually have it as an app? If it was interactive, and then you're, and it, it, it came with like maybe music videos, or or while you're listening to the song, it came with like the words so you can mm -hmm. sing along, or maybe it, like maybe like a karaoke kind of thing, it's just something that's interactive. Features you're saying, but right. I think the issue, and you brought up a good point too. And the other issue I see because I think what's happening, and I, the article doesn't mention. I was looking through it. Is she getting more money because she's doing it in an app? You think she's making cutting out record labels or cutting out iTunes or so whatever? So I don't. The, this is the second article mm. that I read. The first article I believe talked about how it did offer like lyrics. It offered more um, of that con connect ability. And you think about it when you're building a brand, it's all about how close can I be to you right. without seeing you face to face. So mm -hmm. if I can give you me, and you can have everything that I I, I do. Mm -hmm. Then that makes it where you're you're more likely going to continue to buy my music, continue right. to be a part. And, and, then, and on does. that level, it does make me want to download the app. I feel like I'm connecting with Lady Gaga in some right, type of way. Right, right. However, you know, but does it shuffle with the rest of my music that's in iTunes? That's what I was thinking. And, you know, yeah. I have to specifically go into that app just that's to listen point. to that album. And if I want to listen to anything else by her, then I'm going to have to exit that app and go into something well, else. But think of it even bigger than that. Say every artist starts doing that. Uh -huh. Yeah. 20 apps for each artist and that, I'm gonna listen yeah. to this one I'm gonna go to that app and that, that exactly that but imagine if you could put okay so unless they can somehow, of course we decide what Apple does because that's what we've always done right we talk about it Apple does it so sure. one thing that it could okay. be is that maybe there's a folder and you put all the apps 
um, music apps in one folder and it automatically knows I'm sure, these are my music and it plays yeah, the iTunes. Once maybe, enough people maybe. complain, I'm sure they'll figure out a but way you know, to... But you know what it could be like? You know, okay, you know the, um, the bookstore or the news, newsstand? Yes. How uh -huh. the special apps? Right. That, yes. like that. that so could like, be like a music app store. Like, I don't know what right. call it. Like a music stand or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And then they record, also have... Record store. Record, record, record label. label. Record, something like that. And then it goes all into that and we'll it also does your with iTunes. The yeah. But that could be interesting because you have a unique experience in the app. They control right. the experience, and on top of that, you get the a benefit of you know shuffle your music stuff like that, right? And getting new music that could be interesting, I guess that sort of thing. Yeah, unless if you download the app and it automatically gives you all the iTunes music with it, you know, it's just that's it, not possible. But then you still have like twenty apps with all the uh, it correct. still gets messy. It does get messy, but at least you'll have options. At least you're like, hey, I want to be closer to Lady Gaga see... today, and today I just want to listen to her music. I don't like... know if they, <laughs> Apple would let this, but I'd rather see like a different, like almost like an iTunes competitor where an app launches. That has music and artists can control the experience in that one app, and you just change the artists and topics to shuffle. Right. That would be interesting. I don't know if Apple would let you in that because they're almost letting in the competitor. Right. If they let something like that. Well, in. if but she comes, if she comes out with this app, then that that opens up the door of opportunity way, yeah. for that. So. And I know she's probably not the first one because I believe that we talked about um, when I when the last article. I believe that Justin Timberlake. Um, Pink. I believe other ones are already so working already on it. Also, yeah. it's either out or they're working on it. So. The industry again, do we know what's gonna happen? No, but is it gonna shift again? Yes, mm -hmm. but the right. thing is this, the be the more shifts, the better it is because it's always getting better. The, the TV industry, we just now, I mean, I just watched freaking CNN on the way down here. Um, you name it, mm -hmm. we're getting. Right. right. Music, right. TV, yeah. next is gonna be, you know, hair plugs for men that are like electronic and I can grow <laughs> them and shorten them as I need, you know? So, it's cool. So what you're saying is geek is in. Geek is always in. Geek, yeah, geek has, has in. been for some time. Yes. So yeah. now, why I have I don't know. I, I I had it pretty rough in high school. Uh, yeah, high school. Well, that's high school. But that's like geek 10 years. But, but high school nowadays, it, it like that's geek is it, in. It's in. It's in yeah. yeah, like just like just like like if if I if I was uh, an athlete, I might actually dress geeky just because you that's would how, That's yeah. how yeah. in yeah. it is. Yeah. And see, this is how cool it is. Soon, there's going to be a store called Timmy Secret where you can buy all your male lingerie accessories. <laughs> so I, I had to do a plug-in. <laughs> Anyway, plug but in. that was not. Um, that so in there. <laughs> there, there, there's there's something I want to talk about, Daniel. Yes. Oh no. Oh boy. And this is a huge issue. Oh man. Because we're 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 all about being correct, and when when we're not, we're pointed out, and then we like to correct it. Sometimes. So this is the first time it's actually happened. Okay. I'm glad I'm here for this. Um, so, <laughs> what is the largest? It's funny because you talked about it on the way down here, and I just shut up because you were talking. Yeah, about I wanted it. you to tell me what it was, and you would not let me on. You wanted to like like ambush me on. But on you the actually show. talked about it more right after. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> what is my what what is the largest um, file saving type that there is? What do you mean, large file? As far as like the sizes, you have yes. a terabyte, petabyte, exabyte. Um, Crap. I'm, I'm forgetting about the so last one. The Yodabyte. 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 Okay. So we said the Yodabyte was the largest one. Well, we were incorrect, and I apologize for all those listeners. I blame Wikipedia. Our <laughs> the, the largest style, style is called a Googleplex. Oh, that's a number, though. But it's an actual file. It can be a file saving type. Well, I guess and I was proven could. wrong okay. by it. So if you can prove me wrong on the other side, do it. But this is how I was proved wrong. The, the number of it is 10 to the 10th. To the hundred. Okay, but is, is anyone actually using it as a storage right now? Okay. Not yet, but it's a proven mathematical sense well, yeah. where they could. Yeah, because so, it's a large so, number. Yeah. So my number, which was which was ten to the twenty six, <laughs> is not accurate as the largest. No, no, wouldn't be the largest. It'd just be the next level. But it can't be the. I want it to be the largest. So I have to have mine to the <laughs> ten to the ten to the hundred and one. Yeah. But this is the thing. Did you know how their their numbers are? So this is how they figured it out. They put one and a bunch of zeros so they couldn't write zeros no more. And that's how they figured it out. Hmm. Until they got tired? Until they got tired. And that's a <laughs> Googleplex. So when you write one with a whole bunch of zeros, it's a Googleplex. Interesting. Oh. But my thing is this. I've always said so, you've had a Googleplex. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if it goes on forever, that means no one can ever top it. Correct. Because, yeah, okay, I got you. Yeah. So <laughs> it's basically one to infinity. I get right. tired of three zeros. So yeah. that, that's why I was saying. I, I <laughs> so was the like, more in shape you are, the bigger, bigger Google Plex. The Google have. Plex yeah. you have. Right. So anyway, bigger hand muscles you have, I guess. Right. Yeah. Thank you for checking out our show. <laughs> I'm very glad that you guys um, listened. Take a listen to next week's. Also, we're going to be down here in Huntington Beach. Also, but it's going to be an audio. We are super excited for everything that's coming up. I like to throw Daniel curveballs at the end. He does. So let me ask you, Dan, how's our app? It is in development. 
All right, so <laughs> we told you it'd be soon. Again, we do have day jobs. It doesn't look like it when we're out here in beautiful California, which yeah. is supposed to be raining. So it's a really nice day. It is. But stay tuned. Continue to listen to us. I am at Speaker of Truth. And I'm at Dan the Tech Crew. Have a great week. The Beach. <laughs>